Ukraine's parliament has passed a new law making it easier to call up new recruits. It requires all men between 18 and 60 years old to carry documents showing that they have registered with the military. New troops are desperately needed. A general told lawmakers ahead of the vote that Ukrainian soldiers are outnumbered 10 to 1 in places. The parliamentarians also dropped a clause from the law placing time limits on service. Earlier versions had allowed for demobilization after three years. And that omission is a bitter blow for battle-weary troops, some of whom have been fighting since the war began. We're at a training ground near Kyiv. In just a few weeks' time, these soldiers will head back to the front lines, where they've been since Russia invaded two years ago. Last year, I got five days off. Lots of guys in my unit have families who've gone abroad. Some have even become grandfathers and have never met their grandkids. Perhaps they never will. This isn't Alexander's first experience of war. He served in the army after 2014 when Ukraine was fighting Russian-backed separatists in Donbass. He left in 2020 to start a business and a family. His wife and his three-year-old daughter have barely seen him since he went back to his unit after the full-scale invasion. If you were told you'd be serving until 2025, you'd know that if you survive, you'd be going home. If people can't make plans, they get depressed, and then they start making mistakes. Alexander tells us it's not a question of wanting to leave straight away. It's about feeling some kind of control, being able to plan your life. That, he's convinced, would boost morale. Demobilisation after 18 months on the front lines, or a total of 36 months service, were both discussed when this law made its way through Parliament. It was central to the rationale for the new law calling up new soldiers to give veterans a chance to recover. In the end, any mention of demobilisation was dropped, with little prior warning. Only returning prisoners of war get an exception. Russia is preparing to mobilise at least 300,000 men over the next six weeks. That's in addition to 150,000 doing their military service. There could be another wave of mobilization in the autumn. In this situation, demobilizing experienced soldiers would be suicidal. These soldiers' wives and mothers protesting near Parliament don't expect their husbands to come home right away. What they want is clarity. Our husbands are being punished for their patriotism, for volunteering to fight. When the war started, my husband told me, I can't just sit around. I have to serve. Someone needs to defend this country. If I don't go, who will? My husband's exhausted. He's only 29 and he's already gone grey. For now, no one in Ukraine's military or politics wants to make promises to these families that they know they'll most likely have to break. What they can do is make sure it's not just those who volunteered in the early days of the war that are left defending Ukraine's front lines. Let's get more on this from Mike Martin, a war studies fellow at King's College London and a military expert. Mike, good to see you again. Can you tell us why Ukraine has made this change to its mobilization law now at this stage? Uh, well, I think it's two things. One is, is you know, the war has been going on a long time and... It's not obviously the number of killed, but there's probably three times as many injured. And so they're running out of soldiers. And at the same time, we can see that Russia is mobilizing large number of troops continually. You know, the Russian population is probably three times the Ukrainian population. So there are much bigger reserves on the Russian side. And what this law is doing is enabling Ukraine to, to, to basically dig in for the long term. It enables it to know that it will have a pipeline of soldiers for the next few years so that it can can continue to fight. So tell us a little bit more about what exactly has changed here from previous uh, policies on the issue. What what are some of the key provisions of this new Ukrainian mobilization law? Yeah, so it was pretty controversial. It's pretty difficult to get it through the Ukrainian parliament. But essentially, <clears throat> there are two or three key changes. One is to lower the age at which people are conscripted from 27 to 25. You know, previously they were trying to protect the youth of Ukraine and obviously that's <clears throat> less protected now. <clears throat> they are also, after three years, you, you're no longer demobilized. There was discussion about whether that should be brought in. So effectively when people get conscripted now, you're in 
indefinitely until the war ends, um, with a few exceptions. And then uh, they are also slightly loosening the criteria for which people can be called up. So medical exemptions and previously anyone with any criminal record would be exempted. But the serious crime still exempted. But, it, you know, if you get caught for theft or something, you'll, you'll be going into the military. That doesn't exempt you from military service. And what this does is this just boosts the number of troops that they can call upon. I understand that some of these measures at work were quite controversial. Um, how effective do you think that this law will be in addressing Ukraine's manpower uh, capabilities on the battlefield? It, it will work because coupled with all of those <clears throat> criteria loosening that I just described to you, there's greater enforcement. So people have to carry their papers now when they leave the country or whether they get their driving license renewed. Um, people will be checked much more often as to their military registration status. And so there is a much greater level of enforcement going on. In the first year of the war, I think 20,000 Ukrainians mm, fled illegally to escape conscription. And they're trying to stop that drain going forward <clears throat> with some of the tightening measures that they put in place. Russia has claimed capture of the Ukrainian village of Pervobaiske in the Donetsk region. The Russian Defense Ministry said that their troops had liberated those living there. Just days ago, the Ukrainian parliament passed a law making it easier to call up new troops which are desperately needed. A general told lawmakers ahead of the vote that Ukrainian soldiers are outnumbered 10 to 1 in places. The new mobilization law requires all men between 18 and 60 years old to carry documents showing they've registered with the military and drops a clause placing time limits on service. Let's pick up on those issues with Marina Baron, who joins us from the War Studies Department at King's College London. Welcome. What does Russia's capture of this village, first of all, tell you? Good day. Well, what it tells us, and we have to understand where Peromaisky is, it's west of Avdivka. So the Russians have been pushing along the line west of Avdivka, around Toninke, Berdichi, Peromaisky. Now Peromaisky has fallen, and it used to be a stronghold for Ukrainian armed forces there. And it seems like the, the Russian forces managed to push the uh, 59th um, motorized uh, mechanized brigade out of Pervomaisky, meaning that the Ukrainian forces have not been able to gain a, a foothold on the defensive line. So I assume that the slow push will be continuing westwards. And at the same time, we're seeing advances on other directions, such as Robotine in Zaporizhia, such as, again, Chasiv Yar, uh, south of Bakhmut. So it seems like the Russians are trying to complete the capture of Donetsk. So they're working very hard on the Donetsk region. But this is not a counteroffensive by Russia. It is yet to come, and it seems like they're preparing the ground for that. And it is, of course, very costly for the Ukrainian armed forces, because in Peromaisk, Ukrainian fo um, sources admit that it, it, it was very costly in terms of manpower. And none of that sounds good for Ukraine. What are its prospects after passing this new mobilization law? Well, the mobilization law still has to be signed by President Zelensky, possibly mid-May, as expected. And the problem with the law is now that everybody will have to, um, every male will have to carry their military registration documents with them and will have to update their details. So they will have 60 days from when the law um, is signed to update these details. And that includes those living abroad. So there is a possibility that more people will be called up. And of course, there are some penalties expecting those who do not comply with the law. They could uh, lose, for instance, their driver's license in, in some cases and not be able to travel abroad. They will be denied um, pass issuing passports. And again, the question is, how is Ukraine is going to pay and uh, is it able to outfit them with kit and train them on time in order to send them to the front in order to stop the Russian advance? And an important part is what is not included in the law, and that is demobilization of those who have been fighting at the front until now.
Some of them have been surfing for three years. Their prospects certainly don't look good either, do they? No, absolutely no, not. And General Sersky understands very well that um, the Ukrainian armed forces, those fighting at the front, need a rotation. There are huge losses for Ukraine. We don't know the exact numbers, but again, from the reports and from the vicious fights that we have seen uh, for Avdivka, for instance, now Chasibyar and even with examples like such as Krasny, Toninki, Pervomaisky, we're seeing that the Ukrainian armed forces are lacking troops and lacking troops with experience. So what it means that even if the Ukrainian armed forces get the Western technology, they are still having that manpower gap that needs to be resolved. And this mobilization law will most likely have a negative impact on the Ukrainian society that seems not to have the same amount of will it used to have in March 2022 to, to stop the Russians. So that could also make the internal political situation much more complicated and create a crisis in the Ukrainian command. The latest there on Russia's war in Ukraine from Marina Moron. Thank you. Thank you for having me.